there were highs, there were lows, there was lots and lots of seam ripping. When I think about this project, I ask myself, is it historically accurate? No. Would Ruth Goodman be proud of me? God, I hope so. Part of the journey of a breakup is finding who you are again without this person. I decided I wanted to tap into all the things that I had meant to do but had been putting off until some time that we did them together. So I baked bread, planted my own lavender seedlings, and then I killed them, and then I planted them again, and this time they're still alive. And one thing I've been dreaming of doing forever and I've been slowly collecting materials for is to make my own historically accurate gown. No, that's a lie. I always dreamed of one day becoming Arwen or perhaps Aragorn, because who wouldn't love to have that hair and ride horses all the time? And so when I came across a 15 cent simplicity pattern that was, yes, a knockoff Arwen dress, I splurged and spent 15 cents on it and decided to make the pattern. So much like a moody ranger herding a pack of hobbits, I charged into the breach. Luckily, I had a map to guide me, the sewing instructions. The construction is fairly simple. There's one center front panel, two side front panels, two center back panels, two side back panels, and sleeves. The next steps were simple. I ironed out the pattern and the fabric. Then I pinned the pattern to the fabric. Here's a dramatic reenactment of me pinning. All of this was overseen by Julian. Part-time sea captain, full-time cat. I then cut out the pattern, leaving way too much of a seam allowance, and not being particular about where I cut. You're on my work. The first problem I encountered was trying to wrestle my project away from Julian. I have pinned the pieces of the dress together, but found I had encountered my first large problem. I have all the pieces cut out except the sleeves, and I'm trying to pin everything together, but I'm realizing that I forgot to clip some of the markers that show me where I'm supposed to connect it up to the other ones. I forgot which piece is which, and I'm having to wing it. I guess I'll take a break and get back to this later. As I consoled myself with a cup of tea, I pondered the nature of love, loss, and sewing. So sewing has taught me a lot about life. Following the pattern happens, but you'll have to make a lot of alterations along the way. And sometimes what you think is the finished product, the thing that will last you forever, it's actually just a mock-up along the way. From the way this looks when I'm trying it on, you might suspect that something has gone terribly wrong, but this is the plan. To add extra fabric that I can remove later. Once the fit seemed about as good as I would get it, I sewed everything closed with straight stitches. Unfortunately, since I made my seam allowances unnecessarily large, it was a bit of a guessing game here. I ran it through for the first time. The bottom of the dress is an absolute mess, so I'm gonna have to trim that. I'm gonna make thick bias tape to kind of imitate the thick hem down here. and do that all the way around so it keeps its length and is kind of sturdy. This needs to be taken in a little bit. This fits pretty darn well. This needs to be hemmed. I still need to put on the sleeves. I realized I made the mistake of not putting in any pockets. It's offensive to make any sort of dress and not add pockets. I made these sleeves. I've never put in a sleeve before and I can definitely feel that this is too tight. So I think maybe I need to loosen it on top here. But it's getting really close. I already got a sword for it. My other needle. So I'm going to finish this off by walking like Charlize Theron says, how to walk like a queen. Stand tall, and as you walk, just think, murder. After my initial fit trials and tribulations, I came to my true dark night of the soul, setting the sleeves and fitting the bodice. The seam allowance struck again, 
and it meant that my entire bodice didn't fit correctly, so when I set the sleeves, they were wrong. Finally tried on the dress I found, there was not only a hole in the sleeve, but the entire shoulder wanted to keep falling off. I ended up seam ripping both sleeves off so I could remove some excess seam allowance and set them back correctly. After I'd removed the sleeves, I also refit the bodice since it was too loose, and I worked until the shoulder no longer fell off. It also required me trying on and retailoring the gown several times. Since I don't have a dress form, I had to learn how to shimmy my way out of the dress without stabbing myself with a bunch of pins. Yes, I could have used a safety pin, but I like to live dangerously. By this point, I was extremely tired, so I didn't actually film myself making yards and yards of bias tape to wrap the hem and the neckline. But here's a dramatic reenactment. I used my ruler to mark out where exactly six inches was. I cut out my bias tape and ironed it so that there were two one-inch flaps and a four-inch panel to wrap around. For the neckline, I folded that in half to make it smaller. I sewed on the bottom of my bias tape with a straight stitch, and I whip stitched the top on very carefully so that it wouldn't look as apparent. Since I did most of this process on the machine, it was actually very nice and soothing to sew the final pieces on by hand. Okay, back to stitching. With the dress completed, there was only one way I could think of to celebrate. To go see my very large dog and then trample my enemies beneath her hooves. post-apocalyptic quarantine look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this Rorcus adventure. I hope that you've maybe learned something about sewing, and I hope that you've definitely learned something about the threads that connect us all together in this journey we call life. Ah, well, thanks for watching. 
I'll see you all in another period.